Hello and welcome to the Zionics podcast episode two. I'm your host Ben Caruso and today I'm joined by uh, an Australian multi-sport athlete, uh, Liam Luff. Uh, he also happens to be a, an ambassador for Zionics, the um, clothing brand. Um, firstly, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. No worries, mate. Good to see you. It's awesome to be here. Okay, so obviously normally you're in a full-time yes. chair. yeah. So do you mind explaining to yeah. the viewers exactly how this come about? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and what it is? Uh, yeah, so I have a condition called hereditary spastic paraplegia. It is a muscle degenerative disease, affects my lower limbs. It's relatively uncommon, but usually gets lumped in with cerebral palsy. Presents sort of the same, but solely the lower limbs. So I can, upper body torso is all fine there. Um, so I can walk short distances and stuff, but I fatigue really easily, have poor balance, can't stand very long sort of thing. Uh, I did walk for a long time in my childhood, predominantly, and then with a few surgeries, the wheelchair was the best and safest option sort of thing. So shifted to using that full time, still can transfer and sort of things and use stairs if need be, mm. but predominantly the chair is the best option for me. Okay, well, um, so how, so firstly, is it, so when you, you when you were younger, is it you said it was progressive? Yeah. So what what age and what what type of would you say? Wouldn't say upbringing. But yeah. What, yeah. What age did you sort of not have any problems or? Was it, it, always? it was always noticeable. I definitely walked different, tired, quicker sort of thing. But I through whole primary school, I walked getting around my school and everything like that. That was my whole way of getting around. Um, then it was the early sort of high school. I started having more and more issues with my legs. I started having concerns with my knees and I was falling suddenly and had real weakness there. Mm -hmm. And in a high school environment with massive stairs and that sort of scale of school, it became unsafe. They sort of looked at it and realized we need to have surgery to sort of make some of these changes better. It did, but the recovery from that long term meant you need to use a chair for a lot longer and became more dependent on that. Mm -hmm. So it was about year nine for me. So 15 okay. sort of shifted to really using the chair. Okay. So... Um, when you said like issues with your knees and stuff like yeah. that, was that just because of the weakness you were injuring them? Yeah, it was It was a weakness yeah. okay. and it just kept getting worse and yeah. it's sort of a progressive condition, yeah. but it also, my knees, my legs used to really cross in, so my knees hit each other on each sort of step, so it just aggravated themselves yeah. over years of doing that. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I've obviously got muscular dystrophy. Yeah. Obviously not, it's obviously not as, um, don't just sum up with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, call them back. <laughs> um, so, I lost my train of thought, see? Yeah, the, the knocking about, knees. Yeah, eventually. the knocking knees we're talking about. Yeah, so, um, obviously yours is more um, aggressive than what my condition hmm. is. So, I don't have, I'm probably, it, it affects me differently because obviously different muscles are affected yeah, in my body compared to yours. Yep. But same thing issues with knees yeah. lockouts that's yeah. the stuff i've got to avoid because like one injury to a, a ligament or yeah. something and i'm not my body doesn't heal like normal yeah so you're not gonna be mobile and, and eventually yeah. like touch wood not you know a chair might be in yeah. my future yep yeah. and you just talked about like knees my feet when i walk sometimes if i'm fatigued yep yeah. i'll clip that foot yep yep and Very familiar like the other day i had a fall twisted my knee Oof. pretty badly but it was my other leg yeah so i caught myself with the one yeah normally because yeah. i over adjusted yeah i went to take the knee and i fell on that one. <laughs> so it it happens but That's it's bad. when i'm really 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 tired yeah so i just got to make sure that i'm looking after myself yeah in terms of just yeah not overdoing it no exactly the same thing yeah you know so but anyway, wanted to continue on with um with yourself. Yep. So in terms of um, you know, I think we spoke earlier, like what category does your um cerebral palsy fall into? Like is it, it is it genetic or is so, it uh, yeah. we wrote like, you know, like um I suppose there's other ones like your spinal yeah. Uh, yeah. nerves can be affected, but this one is genetic. Yeah, so it's like like the, like the name of it is hereditary spastic paraplegia. Yep. So it is yep. genetic. So I got it from my mum who got it from her father. So we okay. started it, or my grandfather started in our family sort of thing. Yep. And the odds are meant to be 50-50, it's passed down. Uh, my mum gave it to both my brother and I. 
Um, and my uncle gave it the two of four. So he kept the 50-50 going. My mom didn't. She gave it yeah. to both of us. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very potluck. No idea why it sort of started in my grandfather. I think he was the youngest of 11 or something. Only one who had it. Um, but yeah, so it's been genetically passed through and everyone's yeah. had it very differently. Yeah. Everyone's dealt with it very differently. My mum walked pretty much. She didn't use a wheelchair or anything until she was about 30. So okay. she had a very different situation than my brother and I did. Okay, so obviously it affects people differently. Massively, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, which is, yeah, they're all the same. Yeah. All these genetic things. Yeah. You, you can just get the worst. Yeah. Or you, like me, I didn't know till I was in my late 20s. Absolutely. So... Um, and usually it's 15 when you said 15, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, well, um, so I guess, yeah, it, for me, I look at it positively. It's mm. like, you know, I've managed to live a normal life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and it doesn't, I'm very lucky. Yeah. It's not as bad as I've seen, I've heard and seen other stories. But yeah. It, it's, it's the anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Of, what the future holds definitely that's i I have that familiarity with myself being well where was i 10 years ago to where i will be in 10 years and then 10 on that how's it going to go but it's it's interesting to i like having that discussion with people about people who've had a disability onset from birth and once you've had it later in life the differences of how people view it because i my view is actually very awkward with yours i think it's i think it was probably in my experience Mm -hmm. easier having it from birth than being onset because you don't know anything else so you immediately are brought up having that's you're familiar with that's your life and this is it so there's no changes in my mind the experience that you had sort of thing that would be harder in my mind going i'm used to this experience and then changing it so it's always that thing i'm interested in different people's perspectives there well i'll give you mine yeah (laughs) i think the opposite yeah because i'm like well i i i didn't grow up with any limitation like yeah and i'm not saying you no no of course try not to be no you would um, have to try very, very hard to offend me. I'll, yes, I'll tell you that. It's, could, you're not going to. So I look at it differently. I look at it like I know how good, like, yeah, it's completely opposite. Yeah. But the same optimism, yep. you know, and pessimism, I suppose, is that I don't look at myself different yep. because I've had all the experiences that everyone else has had yeah. in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I didn't miss out on anything. Like, and my yep. parents knew. Like, I I played sport, yeah. contact sport, yep. all this crazy stuff. Yeah, like yeah. My, sorry, I'm probably not getting through. <laughs> no, it's all right. But, um, you, yeah, so to me, if if they knew, that would have been stopped. Fair, yeah. Um, I wouldn't have had all the experiences. A bit more like, protective on it sort of thing. But a lot, a lot of my mates today, uh, guys I grew up playing local sport with. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're the ones that I've probably, um, you know, that's, yeah, that's the commute. So I'm very yeah. lucky in a lot of ways in that side of things. Parents didn't wrap me in cotton wool. Yep, yep. I've travelled overseas. I've done all the stuff for normal, you know. But if they knew, comes so can you... I, I, I get I get that. Yeah. It's, it's very much a different approach. I've seen people who've had similar yeah. to me, but... My mum is all similar to your parents that my brother and I, yeah, we had the condition from birth, but it was very much, we were never coddled or it was like, cool, go play on things. You're going to hurt yourself. You hurt yourself. You, well, you learn from it. Well, that's interesting. It's, so it's like, very I, much just that approach. I suppose I'm looking at it from a perspective that my parents would be over, but well, how as, it would change, but yeah, but yeah you don't probably know. wouldn't. Yeah. But that was it. My mum was sort of just like, look, yeah. you're no different. You're it's thrown in the deep end. And my whole primary school, like everything you're saying, it was the same sort of thing for me. I still played rugby league look stupid out there doing it but i still played rugby league and like at school still played all those games at lunch and sort of thing when i could but no mate, one really batted an eye for a while mate, it couldn't be worse than me yeah. <laughs> so I, I tried a lot of, yeah. lot of effort i was all yeah hard. i was all heart yeah <laughs> no skill familiar with that yeah just run in and make contact that was the job i'm like yeah if i drop it i drop it yeah no that's cool I, that i didn't expect that to come yeah yeah in the conversation but yeah. yeah i guess yeah, interesting. <laughs> so, I guess I want to get into your sporting achievements. Yep. Where I want to start first is, um, did you have any like sporting heroes growing up? Who was your, was there an influence or someone there that kind of went, or, or was it just once you got in the chair and were doing athletic stuff in a chair that you're like, hey, I can actually do this. 
it was I'd kind of always had a bit of an interest in sport in general. I, I grew up obviously watching like NRL, being from the Shire Sharks for the team. So I grew up watching like Kamali and Peachy and all like those sort of guys and loved that. But I didn't really have core, like sport as a core identity or something that I really founded myself on until a lot later in life out of high school. But even before the chair, I did play a lot of sports. And I think that was something mum really pushed us to do, always be involved with things. Played t-ball sort of thing when i was like six and seven just on a standard team uh did archery at a point that was a short archery. time yeah tried that as wow. something different where it wasn't as mobile but still doing something but just let me stop you there were yep. you were actually a good shot no 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 chance no <laughs> no i was no. awful i was probably only like 10 or so when we were doing it okay. for a year but no i it was too slow and monotonous to me i was bored yeah. of it quickly because i find like with me since I've got my condition, mm. my reflexes have gotten a lot better. Yep, yep. Like, so if if I like drop something, bang. I'm dead. Yeah, like yep. My, it's just I just thought it might actually give you a little. I, bit I more think of a balance probably is a little bit of an advantage. But as, as a ten year old, I think my interest probably wasn't there yep. to really be able to judge. But yeah, I did a bunch. I played soccer for a year. Like it was in a disabled team, sort of thing, like a differing abilities. So I was walking okay. at that team. Um, but then it was oh. really around... Well, which club was that? Because that might oh. be interesting for people to know. I cannot out remember. Of the I was a kid. It was in it was in Sutherland. Okay. But I cannot for the life of me remember my team. It's yeah. been 12 plus years since I had... Yeah, and how do they... Do how, how does that work? Like, so it was it was all just different abilities. Similar to how there's the... With the rugby league, there's the yeah, different abilities with that. Oh, um, you're talking about... Is that the... Um, what's the comedian's name? Yes, Adam Hills, yeah. Adam Hills. It's the same as that. So I've it's a sort of running game. I've read his with, book. Yes. So I know, I've just forgotten his name. Yeah, but it's the same as that. So it was handled the same. Well, we had a lot of people with physical abilities like myself who can run, but were a bit yep. slower and balanced there. And we had some people with Down syndrome and sort of things like that. So it was a physical standing team. Um, but yeah, it was done that for a year and that was a good experience. Soccer wasn't for me. Um, and then it was pretty much eventually immediately after that, we sort of found uh, wheelchair sports at that point. I still wasn't using a wheelchair for day-to-day -day life, um, but we had contacted and we found out that wheelchair basketball was starting at Sutherland. They were starting a small program there okay. with just a few people. And my mum and I started going to that on a Thursday night at Sutherland in 2008, 2009, and sort of immediately fell in love with that. Immediately just felt so mobile being able to be in the chair. Yeah. After all I was doing was playing sports where I was running and not a quick runner. Uh, be able to jump in a chair and go have that speed and be able to yep. really feel on an yep. equal level with everyone yep. was an awesome thing. We're like, just looking at you now, like you wouldn't like you look fit, yeah. like you look big, like yep. a normal, like a normal bloke. Um, and you know, obviously, I've seen the guys play yep. footy in the wheelchairs and basketball. A lot of them have just got lower limb injuries yeah, from exactly. work and yep. stuff. Still super strong, Absolutely. powerful. Like when you blokes hit. No, oh, yeah. When you guys in league, in especially the, in, in the contact. top, in the top level, when yep. it's a grand final day or yeah. a big game or like state of origin yep. and all that, like use bash. It's, oh yeah, no holds barred. It's, it's full out there. Yeah, it's, it, it came with time. I mean, as a child, I was a I was a heavy boy. I was a big big fella. Okay. I mean, not doing sports as much. I'm well, trying to, but with the impairments, I wasn't particularly great. And as a kid, poor eating habits. So sport was something that I was really. Okay. pushed into like not pushed into but i wanted to do as well to stay fit and maintain fitness okay. even when i was a bit bigger yeah lost which is important weight. yeah absolutely and it's been super important for me and really stayed with that as something to gain my fitness to gain my own confidence and it's just been an awesome experience doing that and basketball wheelchair basketball was a real start of it and slowly yep. after years of doing that yep. eventually rugby league found me and i think i think the what i've noticed is like basketball is probably the greatest, like, the best sport that can actually go across. Like, yep. men play it, yep. women play it, wheelchair. It's basically it's a very similar game. Yes, yeah, because the rules are just so. It's one to one, pretty much as yeah, much as you can be. Exactly. It's, and, the only difference is travel, and you push instead of feet. But yeah. it's no different there. All the other rules they do are the same. Yeah. Same rim, eight seconds, twenty four seconds. Yeah. We play the same rules. So, so what did you say? You you push so, it? Yeah, you hold so, it. Yep, you dribble, sand balancing sort of thing. You can have two pushes of your wheels, same as like a travel call. You push it more than three times, would be a travel. Uh, we don't have the carrier rule, so you can put the ball like that, obviously, because you put it in your lap, so some players have different abilities there. You can do that, that's mm. fine compared to the AB game. 
But other than that, if you watch basketball, you will be able to watch wheelchair basketball and immediately understand it as well. Yeah, no, that's what I was sort of getting at. Yeah. Like the way he's moving around the court one on one, trying yep. to isolate, block plays, yep. all that sort pick of pick and stuff. roll, all that sort of yep. thing. It's translates yeah. from the able game. Yeah, it's really cool. And um, I don't know, he's getting the ball. Up there. It's, I think that it's, would be the hardest that's, part. I've had a lot of my AB friends come and give the game a go and they, yeah. they're they like, oh, this is fine. And then when you actually sit down in a chair and you realise how high up yeah. the basket is from where you're sitting, they're a bit daunted yeah. by it, but it just comes with practice like every sport. And just for the viewers, AB means able body. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. So an able body um, person, which yeah. we we play wheelchair rugby. Yes, yep. And there are guys that play for other reasons like... Yeah. Um, Family they, connections are very common. Family connections. They might have a son yep. that's got, you know, they're trying to show them, hey, like, you, you know, which I think is cool. I it's love, awesome. It's I love, awesome. that's probably one of my favorite stories yeah. out of all of them is like when you see a father who's got a son or a daughter and he's like, he's been forced to like sort of show them yeah. this is the way for you. Yep. Um, I think that's, that's um, a really good part of it. And the other thing too, before we do talk about your rugby league, yep. um, is um, the camaraderie when you play. Like, yeah, sure. The, as I said, like the semifinals, State of Origin. Yep. We, I, I think I played City Country. Yes, yep. A couple of years ago. Um, you know, that obviously the tempo goes up. Yeah. It's more competitive, of course. But 90% of it for the young people and getting into the sport, it's like everyone's just helpful yeah the the um, grassroots level of the yeah. game is such a community-based yeah. thing and we have we mainly have our main comp at menai which has yeah. two divisions and the second division is tier two so it's for the younger players and players yeah. who are one step behind the tier one sort of thing so mm -hmm. that developing aspect and that's one of the best aspects of the game where we'll have brothers like you mentioned we we're talking about we have brothers one has a disability one doesn't being able to play a game together and really be able to have that experience yeah. that it's just amazing to watch out there watching a little brother be able to play with their big brother yeah. experience that they wouldn't have done yeah and just a whole community vibe of that aspect where everyone can play where am um, i i played for years in tier two as well and i played with my then girlfriend now wife yeah. who's able-bodied as well so it's that sort of experience you yep. get to share something with somebody which a lot of disabled people otherwise yeah. won't get to well you just touched on it just then um like i've got two older brothers yeah but when you play sport there's ages yeah you know i couldn't play Yep. footy with them because they were three four years older than me yeah yep. so you're going to get crushed yeah it, if you, you know sure it does happen as you get older you of can course. see with like you know um nrl there's been a couple of twin brothers yeah. you know <laughs> uh, think of the walters brothers yep um you know and then you've got yeah that get to play but that's elite level yes they've got yep. time to catch up but Definitely. if you're just a weekend warrior or yeah. just trying to have a bit of fun <laughs> that's it um those two brothers the one that's able body and the one that's not, yeah. that's an experience that they wouldn't have absolutely anywhere else unless, no. you know, they might... I'm not saying all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. So I think that... And for the people that might hear this and they, like, that's an aspect they need to consider. Yeah. Like your brothers and your family can join in. Yeah. It, make a day of it. And as I said, the community and the camaraderie and everyone's happy and like, you know, I, I, that's the one aspect of it I miss. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, exactly. playing with the, I just think of, um, I think of the two Finns. Yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, who's the other? He's a really good player um, for his age. Toby? Yes, yeah. yeah. They, we have a solid team down there with the, the team I was coaching. So. Yeah. Oh, you were coaching? Oh, yeah, I was boys. coaching the Sharks. So that's that's the benefit that we have. Yep. The real community, as you were saying, a lot of the older boys who play that tier one and rep thing give back and are coaching the yep. tier two teams and the developmental sides. So that's what I did last year. I was coaching for that Sharks team, which is yeah. nice being from the Shire. So it was awesome to be able to sort of represent that side. Yeah. They went to the grand final, came super close, only lost by like a try. But uh, they had an awesome performance from the year before. I think they won one game out of eight to really have a turnaround. It was such cool. an awesome experience for yeah. a team which predominantly was guys under 10 and 11. It was yeah. a really young side. No, I, I remember playing and um, seeing some of those kids. Yep. And we just touched on it before about basketball, like yep. rugby league. It the way they've structured the rules is they've tried to do it as best they can yep. to be like what you see on the yeah. Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Um, which say anyone that's ever played rugby league, like yourself as a kid, yep. I played as a kid. If even if you're just a fan, yeah. Again, you can turn up. And it go, translates quickly. Oh, 
that looks like rugby league. Yep. You know, yeah. We, we, we literally had a come try event last weekend okay. and I brought one of my friends down who's, who's an able-bodied, he played league for years, big, well-built fella, um, brought him down, popped him in a chair and the only thing I had to really learn was the pushing and as soon as he gets it, he starts passing around he's like, oh yeah, it's this exact yep. same. You have the tags on the shoulder so it's like yep. tag sort of thing instead of the waist. Yep. Other than that, you pass on side, five tackles, rugby league. Well, when I played and I'm not, trust me, I'm not talking myself up, <laughs> I was that's the hardest part yeah people think oh but i'm able body yeah you've never been in a wheelchair no that's the, the kids thing. the kids that have been in one <laughs> yeah. like you or someone like yourself yep. and i'm thinking of um you know the two brothers yes Wep- well, baden and jesse absolute speeds oh because they it, it's unbelievable yep. how fast they are exactly like, my, my mate had that experience where he's like oh i'm big i'm fine at this i can do this and uh-huh. they just cook him oh yeah they just the speed that the youth have coming into this game yeah. is incredible that's the thing which takes the longest to teach the but not movement. just that yeah their natural chair movement yep. it's like they they just move just far enough they just their yep. peripheral vision of their chair where they're at they, it, they it's can, being one with the chair you sort of know exactly your dimensions and where yep. you're going to fit and they see those line breaks perfectly knowing that they can get that. So yeah. it's that thing which comes with time and when you're yeah. in a chair so long, you pick up on it quick. And that's why I say to people, like, if you go and play, you're going to, like, it's hard. Yeah. Because you yeah. don't, you're not used to, even the boys that are able-bodied, mm. they'll never be as good in the, they've got different Very, yeah, there's different pros and cons yeah, in the yeah, game for all to these play. people. Um, and, yeah, you'll find... Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was sort of getting at. No, exactly. Like it, the it's, chair it's, is just so good. And um, one thing I noticed when I played is the spatial awareness. Yep. To me, it's the same. Yeah. So I'm able to... You're reading the game in the same sort of way? I can play. Yep. Like, so for people that play rugby league on the weekend or yep. able body or whatever, still playing or remember playing, <laughs> I can feel without seeing... Like if I'm going this way, I can feel someone still coming yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Me. Yep. And I don't know whether everyone's got that. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people have that similar experience. Yeah. Where you, if you've played it before, yeah. those things don't go. Yeah. You're still gonna have that reading like, it and that little understanding. Like he's off my side. I got this. Yeah, I can feel like hang on a minute, hold, 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 pass. Yeah, exactly. Draw it, I've drawn him in far enough. I Spot can get on. the guy around the outside. Um, so that that's one thing I noticed about the game is that you still feel and you know when you're going to get belted yeah. like you can feel that too oh yeah it's like yeah. oh I'm stuck you're running into it full pelt you yeah. know you're going over I'm stuck yeah, yeah. Um, he's got me that's that's it yeah, <laughs> he hospital got passes yeah. and you're, he got me you can deal with this one now Um, so yeah it is it is fun and I like the rules yeah they've, uh, they've done really well to yeah. make it as close to yeah. the running game as possible with it still being yeah. obviously translatable indoors on a court and wheelchair sort of thing hmm yeah, I think that again, even even not only just the rules, but like you can actually go into a game with a game plan. Yep. Something that's a little bit different. Absolutely. Like the kicking. Yeah. Like it's still the same. Like, yeah. You, you know, still have like different approaches about what you early. want to target and how you want mm. to sort of run. Like you'll still have yep. a lot of the offensive side comes over. You still have your split plays, your block plays. You'll still run all those sort of things. And defensively, the same idea with what you're doing. It's it yeah. translates really well we have a lot of yeah. able-bodied players who've played at the higher level and are bringing in yep. drills they've played in the yep. running game and you can translate yep. it over smaller space only five players aside but it still runs in effect because a lot of these players really yeah. only need three odd players sort of thing so they still work yeah and it's still effort plays exactly it's still turn and chase scramble yep. all that sort of stuff yep. is still the most important part Definitely. kick chase yeah exactly <laughs> all the you know but just Go a little bit quickly. Yep. So how many players on the court? So we have five players on okay. a side mm-hmm. playing across regulation. We usually should have three basketball courts playing along the width of them. Yep. Uh, so, that way. So the courts turn sideways. Yes. Yeah. You're playing so you've got across the two rings on the outs- yeah. on the touch lines. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, typically, you can only really use two courts. When we play at Manai, we only have two courts yeah. just out of availability. Three courts is one expensive and two uncommon to have that many next to each other okay. but when we play at a high level it is three so when you play for australia at the end of the year yep. which we'll get to in a minute yep for the kangaroos do wheelaroos wheelaroos yeah they should be the kangaroos anyway that's just <laughs> my opinion um 
as with the women. They yeah, should, jillaroos and they should be kangaroos. It's yeah, just that, yeah. that's it. Why? Why have? <laughs> what's a jillaroo? Anyway, that's my rant. <laughs> rant over. Um, um. So yeah, so when you play for Australia, yeah. it's cross three courts. Yes, it will be the proper regulation three. Basically, it won't be obviously actual wow. basketball courts. It's proper stadiums, but yeah, yeah. the length is that length. Yeah. So it's, so it's big. Oh. So that would be, that's a lot of space. It's a lot more to work with. So that's wow. why the kicks become even that more important yeah, sort of thing. The kicking can... game changes everything compared to that. our local competition. When you play, we yeah. only really get to do it for like State of Origin. We had a month ago, we played on three. And it's it's something you don't get used to. You you only get to do it right. in our game once a year sort of thing. And you look at it and you go, wow, okay. Yeah. There's a, there's an extra 20 meters you got to run basically. You got to really so account for that. We spoke earlier about the young quick players. Yep they're going to dominate yeah because they're so fast when you get a good line break yeah. it just makes it yeah. there's, a, there's so much more to catch and you can get easy meters if you do take wow. advantage of that because there's that much more to cover wow Jesus you got to be fit yeah is it <laughs> full, is, full 80 yeah. minutes full 80 40 and a half and we have now we have proper substitutions and everything so the same sort of rules there okay so you so, under international so how many interchanges do you get I don't exactly remember we only started using it for the state of origin a month ago and that was the first time I played with it um, obviously I didn't have to worry about it. The coach just told me when to go on and off. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's something they've got to consider as well. So everyone's got to be fit to play basically oh, yeah. full length games at this point to really just yeah. stay on top and sub out with injuries or tires, or you got to be able to jump back on the court ASAP. Yeah. Well that, I suppose like you look at, um, yeah, I've seen guys just, I, I've played yep. where I've gone to take off and my wheels yeah. just, <laughs> just sit there and nothing the, happens. Pop. Something's popped out and you're like, oh. Yep, a lot of, lot of the pit stops. You need you need yeah. that technician there to sort of yep. get everything covered. So yeah, happens in the middle of the game and you just got to sub out quickly, get someone yep. back on or change your wheel. Yeah. Well, not that you probably care, but I've retired yeah. from, from playing. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but um, I still want to, like, get involved. Yep. That's why I've got you here. That's yeah, exactly. why I've got you in as an ambassador. As people can see and hear, you, you know, you're just... You know, you're a really, really nice guy. Like, <laughs> Appreciate that. But that's true. Yeah. Like, that's why when you, I suppose, when you're doing a sporting brand, you're kind of going, well, yeah, you can go and get the best tennis player. Mm. Or would you rather Roger Federer? Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Who, who do you want representing your brand, yeah. you know? Sure. There's, a, But as in terms of wheelchair athletes, like, I'm so happy to have you on board. I appreciate um, that, man. I'm happy to have been yeah. sort of given this opportunity. I really yeah. think it's an awesome brand and what you're doing. And it's a really cool experience. Yeah, no, I think that, you know, um, even just getting, as I've always said, like everything that I do, if, if it gets, changes something or gets someone interested, yeah. or changes one thing or yep. gets through to a family that, hey, you know, there is, you know, or they see what I'm doing and go, hey, well, if he can do that, that's I it. can do that. Well, that's a win for me. Exactly. I, I yeah. view it the same way with, yeah. with how I sort of treat a lot of the giving back, like trying to do the yeah. developmental juniors programs. That's all I want just yeah. to like, I don't even want to be a mentor, just to show people that it's out yeah. there and what you can do. And the options for these sports, which still are really underrepresented, mm. and just give that option that they yeah. are out there and something you can really focus on and have a great time with. Well, I think um, I want to ask you another go down a different track, but yep. you look at like um, Dylan Alcott. Yep. Like Dylan, I'm reading his book at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm struggling only because <laughs> I've been so busy yep, doing yep. all this stuff that I just, you know, I think the other day I opened up the book and I read like three pages and I went, I was asleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I just, I'm just a bit, um, but I'll, I'll, if he's watching or listening, I will finish your book. Yes, I promise. good. But um, you also started your own business as well. Yeah, yeah. I so do you want to, I'm not sure if that's still going or? COVID and then a few other things sort yeah. of got in the way, but it was the intention of trying to do disability support sort of thing yeah. as well because um, I'd had experience working with yeah. other companies doing that and then I sort of looked at it and wanted to do that myself and yeah. COVID got in the way and a few other matters but at the end of the day I came into it yeah. and my entire intention was if I can make someone a little bit happier do something for one yeah. person it was a win for me at the end of the day well that's what I want to touch on so forget about you can start again yeah, yeah exactly business is still there yeah like it's not the end of the world but just I want to touch on that like you have a disability. Yeah. 
why like why was that so important because it's but it's a buddy system isn't it yeah it was it was very much a real thing that i yeah. wanted to start it with was from my brother who has okay. my condition as well but he also has asperger's and it was a real thing that we found there's a sort of stigma a lot of people have with disabilities to getting support and getting those sort of things where they feel they're being cared for or doted on and they feel like it's a very transactional relationship and it just especially in younger teens and those sort of things it's the last thing they kind of want they want to be able to have and go out and hang out with friends and do all those sort of normal yep. things. So having someone who's probably an excellent carer, an amazing human being, but someone who's maybe in their late thirties or something like that, supporting them, they don't have that same relationship and they feel it's it's a business or it's transactional or whatever. Yep. So that was my intention to really try and get something a yep. bit more peer based. So getting yep. younger and really try and build those relationships so they feel like they're they're more normal, air quotes of having those experiences that typical teenagers do and going out and doing that and not being afraid to take advantage of supports and what is out there yep. and getting out of home and breaking routines and being able to just explore and take advantage of life where they might be afraid to otherwise. Yeah. I think that's... When you told me that, it was just like... Because that was when we had our first yep. meeting and I offered you the, the role, yep. whatever role, <laughs> we've discussed in, in um, my business um, or in Zionics. Um, and then when you told me that, I was like, hey, that's that's a really good idea. Mm. Like, in terms of, um, not just, um, but in terms of what you just said, having someone your age that, you know, that wants to care for you, yeah. but they're also your age. Yeah. You're close enough to you to be a mentor. Exactly, or, yeah. Or having a positive having, relationship, which yeah. isn't sort of that transactional stigma yeah. or something they're afraid and, to take advantage of. And I don't know, but I would imagine that... Um, as sort of what we alluded to at the beginning, like you knew from the beginning, I didn't. So yeah. making friends for me, to me, like, yeah. but like that's so important Yeah, that people don't, you know, might see he's got the same thoughts, same yeah. ideas, wants the same dreams as what you do. And yeah. I just think that that needs to be, people need to like, you know, make sure that they're, you know, at least trying to be there exactly yeah, and that's, so, that's exactly it. that's kind of why i had the similar experience to you like in my primary school and high school my disability really didn't get in the way of my yeah. social life at all yeah. I, I still had a bunch of friends i still had all those sort yeah. of standard experiences but no my brother and some other people who i know didn't have that same thing where yeah. the disability did impact them a little bit more and hinder those sort of things so i was fortunate where i never really needed the sort of things that i was mm -hmm. intending to provide i was incredibly lucky with that but just the fact that knowing people needed it, even if I could affect and help one or two people, was all I really wanted yeah, to do at the end of the day. No, that's awesome. Congratulations. Like, you know, it it's still there. Yeah, I think yeah, exactly. A great idea. And if we can uh, COVID yeah. stuff. COVID a lot of, and just, yeah, you know, it, inexperience. A lot, a lot of things, things got in the way. But yeah. one day, hopefully, to do something with it. But at least I have made something happy out, someone yeah. happy out of it. So yeah, worst no, case scenario, I'm, mate, didn't lose anything from it. Credit to you. You're only, you're, you're only a young man. Yep. So to do that, that's exactly... So there's two examples. Like I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You've done what you've done. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Um, and I think that that's the key. Yeah. To, you know, um, to anything like this is that you, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. It's the biggest thing yeah. with people with disabilities, I think, is drive. Yeah. There's you definitely know people who are incredibly capable to do it, but they just don't have that drive or they're happy to just be complacent. And that was something but that's not growing just, up. I was but that's not just with. disabled people. No, absolutely everyone as well. But yeah. I, just, I know it with a lot of disabled people who have that and they just get complacent and go, yeah. Oh well, I can't do it then. Yeah. Whereas I was very fortunate to be brought up where it wasn't ever yeah. that. It was you're gonna do things, you're gonna yeah. do that. You you're no different. So I've done that. I've studied a bunch of things and dropped out of things and started yeah. things and left things and had those sort of normal 20 something experiences yeah. of being, you need to live, you need to have that life. But I, um, like obviously your grandfather had it, mm. what you've got. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I don't mean to no, no, make no. a joke out of it, but <laughs> you know, um, your whole family, yeah. like it's generational of go get it yeah yeah exactly don't let it, don't let it hold you back no that's um, it everyone you need to get on with life i mean my mum yeah. worked the whole yep. time so she basically she had us i mean it never gets in the way i mean if you don't want if you don't let it it doesn't yeah it's as simple as that well that's that's i want to touch on that yep. too like how do you not let it get to you or what are some of the things that you you just 
I just find you're similar to me in the fact you just have this positive outlook. Yep. You just don't see nothing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's hard. I never got affected by it. Yep. I, I, growing up, I was incredibly lucky that I never, through mm. 12, 13 years of teaching, mm. I never really had any bullying experiences. I never had any negative sort of experiences okay. with students or teachers. I didn't have anything. I was always very positive about it and it was something unique, which I was able to embrace and sort of make yep. jokes of and make light of and just be... Yep. that's who I am it's not negative it's not yep. anything it's just what it was yep. so I didn't view myself differently I yep. did everything my whole life the same yep. as all my peers and moving into adulthood it was the exact same experience I just well, didn't change like again able-bodied kids might struggle with identity yeah might struggle with um, who they are yep. or um, you know maybe socially yep. they might be a little bit not everyone's life of the party yeah <laughs> um, or pop you know what i mean yes yeah they've got different interests or they're just not like that way yeah. but um i think that people like yourself you know just proves that you know everyone's got their journey yeah and it doesn't it doesn't alter it might alter i guess what i'm trying to say is it doesn't alter your um your journey yeah. where, you, where you're gonna your outcome your can still be whatever you want yeah to be. exactly and, and it's exactly that like i i definitely had points in high school where i had issues with identity and i was unhappy about my disability and questioned things and wasn't happy about it but the more i sort of just sat on it you look at it now as, as you sort of mentioned having the opportunities i've had only because i'm disabled i wouldn't have had otherwise it's an ab like yeah. being able to hopefully like at the end of the year playing for the wheelers representing australia that's an opportunity that very, very unlikely I would have had if I was without this disability sort of thing. Mm. So at the end of the day, I wouldn't have been able to travel and do those mm. sort of things that I'm now having the opportunity to do because of it. So it's always those silver linings. It's a different experience, but it's a good result anyway. Yeah, well, um, I tried to I tried to actually get on the team yeah. the official team. Uh, uh, kit, kit, yep, yeah. <laughs> kit manager That's it. or photographer. I'm available. <laughs> if anyone wants to give me a job, I'd like to go to London. For oh, a, it's going to be great. On a, um, on a wheelaroo tour. Yep. Kangaroo tour. <laughs> yeah. We like to drink too. Have fun. <laughs> um, so let's, all seriousness, yep. let's get onto it. You've been selected yes. for the wheelaroos yep. uh, to represent the Australia at the World Cup yes. at the end of the year. So, just explain to me like um, how you found out you were in the team um, and you know what that meant to you and your family and and like you're gonna represent yeah. your country yeah like I it's it's still it's still hard to sort of really realize that it's only a couple of months off now and it's getting closer and it's like that's crazy that's a scenario I'm actually living but uh, we had obviously the World Cup was originally meant to be in 2021 so this Correct. has been an even longer journey than we sort of originally anticipated. Okay. But we had, it was about 2019, we had England come down and we played an Ashes test against them. Um, and we had a few selection camps there where it was both some Queensland players and New South Wales, because we're the two hubs of the game at this point in Australia, uh, were doing some camps and selection stuff to play for that Ashes team, which was basically the warm up to then going into the selection camps for the Wheelaroos and the World Cup. Uh, I just missed out on that. I trained and did that, and we selected a, thing, a side of 10 with two shadow players, so two players who were on the side but wouldn't be playing. I missed out. I was apparently 13th, basically, so just shy of being a shadow player. Um, and immediately from that, I sort of went home. I remember driving home from, I think it was out at Minto, so an hour I'd drive home for me the whole time going, all right, I'm going to prove them wrong next time. I, I was going into the next camp knowing I'm going to prove them they made a mistake with that. And we had the, went down and watched it. I represented and played for the Blues against England. So I still had the opportunity to play them, which was really awesome. They're a tough side. So looking forward to now and carrying them again at the end of the year, three years later. Um, but we went into that, had a few camps every couple of months leading yeah. into selection. Really amped it up myself personally with my own fitness and football goals in uh, 2020, even during COVID and everything, really just had to try and stay fit on top of that and focus because i just had that drive to make sure i got to this point yeah and when they so it wasn't like so did you get a phone call from from eventually from yeah. brett yeah we had we had about say, three or four more camps of selection and i kept every after every training camp i went home and i wrote down the names and i'm like all right i should slip in here he's a lock he's a lock he's a lock i i can get in here i can make it yeah um and we kept doing that and waited and then 
it was literally right before my birthday at the start of this year. So in February, I got the call and Brett told me that I'd made the side to go over there. So that was amazing. I'm pretty sure I pretty much immediately cried. Uh, cause, oh, cause, really? Yeah, I, I just was overwhelmed, man. Because I was at that so point cool. where I'd, I'd put in my head either two scenarios. I was like, if I make it, this is incredible. Or if I don't, I'm young enough, I'll make the next one. And I was sort of running in my mind, that's fine. I'll, I'll make the next one. I'll, I'll be there next time. I don't, I'll be fine. They have a good side, regardless what happens, we'll be fine. And then to get the call, I was like, oh man. So to get that, and then the worst part was being told, we can't announce it for a couple of weeks. And I told all my friends I was waiting for the call. So I had my birthday that weekend, knowing fully well I'd made it. And I had and to be- you couldn't tell anyone. Zip, I couldn't tell anyone. And they were all asking, and I'm like, don't know, didn't, no idea. So eventually being told properly, it was, amazing and then uh, i would have told them yeah i was that <laughs> close but my friends are gossip so i wouldn't i wouldn't let them i knew they'd post something and be stupid so i had to keep it to myself for another Fair few enough, weeks yeah, um, the rules are the rules that's it i had to have to abide by it yeah, and i want to stay on that plan exactly i was happy yeah. to be there so yeah. had a few training camps since then i think we've had about four and we've got two more in september and then we'll head over in october now um for your competition yeah I believe France and England yes. are basically either world champions. Yeah, France, France won the last one. Okay. And England, I believe, was the runner-up at that time. It's a competition where they're the A1 and the A, A2. They're very much the upper echelon that everyone's sort of working towards. Okay. And the last four years, the progress that our, we have made as an Australian team, looking at the side that we're going to take out there now, yep. compared to 2017, is night and day. Yeah. it's excellent of course those other countries have made progress as well yeah. like seeing them keeping up with their competition and watching their fixtures they're an excellent both excellent sides as well so do they play each other often they get the opportunity a lot more oh, being okay. sort of closer so that's why we're at a bit yeah. of a disadvantage and especially yeah. with the rankings it always looks a bit weird that we're so low in the wheelchair rankings but it's because we've only our last fixture was as i said the ashes sort of test we did in 2019 yeah whereas wales yeah. and england and france play well, the, kang yeah. the kangaroos, yeah. Australian kangaroos, yeah. ranked four. Four, in the world. I was going to say. Yeah. Like, Silly. come on. It's it's Hello. all based on the actual games. And same story as us, yeah. but we're down at seven, yeah. which doesn't reflect the side we are. Yeah. And I think that's good. I think we are like being the underdog and coming into it, where I think, especially yeah. going to England, playing them first game up, first opportunity with the home crowd there, I think we want that underdog sort of vibe. It'll be really enjoyable oh. to hopefully silence the crowd. But just going back to the able body game, yep. the kangaroos, like that New Zealand team, mm. that's a bloody good yeah. New Zealand team. There's, there's with, a very with, good unit there. With um, Jerome Hughes and um, you got Manu. Yep. Tamari Martin's back playing. Like, Mulatalo should be on the wing yeah. as well. I mean, Sharks rep. Well, because he was going to be Queensland. Yeah. But now man. he's had to play for New Zealand. That's it. Yeah. And then, well, then you throw in the Bromwich brothers. Yep. They've Fisher got a good Harris. side. It'll be... Very, I'm hoping we get to yeah. actually watch some games while we're I, over there, which would be amazing just to see. I think that, yeah, I, I think Australia, like, but I, I was speaking to my brother about it the other day, Tedesco. Yeah. Everyone forgets about Tedesco. Yeah. He has to be there. He's, he's the, the number one. But he does, the reason why he, like, you know, doesn't win the man of the series or he doesn't win the man yep. of the match is because he does it every week. Yeah. And it's like, he's just there. Yeah. Bit like, bit like Smith. I was, was going to say, like, I, have, yeah. I have that look with, I'm huge yeah. in NBA and the American yeah. sports sort okay. of thing. And it, it's the same approach with like, I view with like LeBron James for a lot of like the 2010s and sort of thing. Yeah. Where if you were going off the best player for the year, he probably would have eight or nine MVPs, but you get used to, oh, he's going to put up 30 and 10 and nine. All right, cool. Yeah. We'll look at someone else. We need you to get 40, 50, yeah. and now yeah, we'll, Now we'll be impressed. Yeah. I think it's the same thing with Teddy, exactly, where yeah. it's like, oh, this is run of the mill. You so, ran for 200, cool. But I think that's the key. Like, how do... Um, yeah, but I think New Zealand, that they're going to be... I'm not sure about England. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't paid attention to who's going to fully be on their side. But I know... Um, yeah, I think... Um, well, Bateman. Yeah, yep. He's a great player yeah he was excellent uh, apparently he's coming to the tigers i was reading so the talks on that be interesting. well whichever team you go for i'd be throwing the kitchen he's <laughs> yeah free, he's a free he was player. excellent man yeah anyway get back to the wheel of roos yep. side of it yep. so it's just I, I find it interesting like with the history of rugby league that france yep like if you if you know your footy rugby league that france was like the first country that kind of invented the world cup right yep like played it in 1954 right okay like the england and great britain kangaroos and that yep it wasn't like a tournament it was yeah, um but france were always such a big 
rugby league yep. country. Yep. And they just are not. Yeah, not anymore. But in the wheelchair, like this, Still. it's like a, to use a French renaissance. Yeah, of, yeah. Of France, like yep. that they're like number one. They are, they are excellent in our and game. They're so quick. England and Australia are like going, we've got to beat these guys. Yep. Work out a way to beat them. Because yep. they were real, they were excellent yes. rugby league country back in the 50s and 60s. Right. Um, so I think that, so you're on the team, you're going to England. Um, I just want to ask like, so this actually will be televised on TV. Yep. So do you want to explain what, so, yeah. you know, what you know about it? Yeah, it was, we, we announced, they got announced uh, a few weeks ago that it was the Foxtel and KO sort of picked up the whole world cup. So all the men's, women's and wheelchair games will be shown. <laughs> so obviously some super early mornings over here. But they'll be all on live and on KO, so they'll be able to watch, which is awesome. Mate, some of my favourite mornings. Yeah. Get, getting up, watching the kangaroos play great Yeah, games. seriously. Like, I, I remember watching some as a yeah. kid, but it'll yeah. be awesome. And I think at one thirty is our first game or something. On 1.30 the morning. in the morning. Yeah, I think one's one thirty, one's at 5.30, and one's like at 10.30 p.m., like a, a night late time. Is that a Saturday night? I think the one thirty might be a Monday morning here, actually. <laughs> So a Shit. really early wake up for that one. Shit. I think one was a Wednesday night here, ten thirty, so a prime time, even later. Well, if it was Saturday but, uh, night, I'd probably still be going. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just, just roll on. Just keep on, but yeah, yeah. We got three pool games, so they'll be the main ones. We know the fixture times on. And who's your who's your opponent? So, you uh, said so we got England, England uh, Spain, and then I believe it should be Ireland will be the other one. Okay. So, so are these Spain and Ireland yeah. emerging or are they a challenge? Spain have always been great. We had really? we played Spain in 2017 and they played them and it was a very close game. Australia did get the win, but it was a very, okay. very good challenge. Yeah. Um, from what we've seen, they've improved as well, as have we. So not sure where we yeah. stand, but it'll be a good game to watch. Absolutely. Ireland is a newer fixture to it. They as well were only brought in sort of late. It was originally meant to be Norway, but COVID sort of got in their way. So they had to pull out sort of last minute. So Ireland's filled the shoes. Mm. Um, so I'm not too familiar with their game. I think they are yeah. quite a bit younger. Yep. Um, so that'll be an awesome experience but, for them to just get over there at least. Well, as I just touched on before, it's amazing. Like mm. talking rugby league in France and Spain. Yeah. Are competitors. Yep. You know, um, it's just... Which is good, like I suppose for the. That's why they need to get behind. And, and I mean, it's... when you're saying surprising, the other team that's in the other pool is the USA. Yeah. The USA has made it for our wheelchair, which is awesome yeah. to sort of see. So, hopefully, getting more American representation in oh. rugby league and awareness of it after sort of the whole Toronto yeah. Wolfpack and everything. Yeah. More well, awareness of the game. Forget rugby league for a minute. Just talk about the United States, yep. right? They do not lose <laughs> any sport. That's it. And that's why even you look at like football. Yep. I'm talking about European yes, soccer. Yep. How, like, I think they failed to qualify for the World Cup, mm. but their sport's so big. It's growing so quick. Yeah. Uh, they they shock me. Yep. Because, you know, Olympics, any, they do every single sport. Yeah. The Olympics, they've got one athlete in every yeah, sport. Yeah, exactly. Cross you the know, borders, there's, tick there's, the box. They've there's got no go. Winter Olympics, you know, all their sports, um, yep. are, you know, anything like basketball, stuff like that. Like, it is their sport. Yeah, yeah. Other countries are getting good. Yes. Um, but they just do not lose. Yeah. And that's why I'm so surprised that um, to hear them in the wheelchair side of things, like, they're going to be good. Yeah, give them time. Like, I mean, yeah. they're just young. That's the only thing. Yeah. With a lot of these sides, they're only young. And give them, give them a few yeah. more years to really focus and get what they can from other but countries like Oz, and learn. Like Aussies sports a big part of their life yeah. so you know they're going to be physically yes yeah at the, you know so um yeah they don't lose at nothing yeah. that's one thing that i've always you know um they, and they 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 participate in every sport yeah yeah top to bottom that's um, it there's someone that does it um but yeah so the united states obviously france on that side yeah do you know the other teams? The other two in that pool over there. Wales. Mm -hmm. Wales are in there as well. And um, where are they on the scale? I think they were sort of pretty good with Spain. I think they were pretty one okay. of those really solid teams in the middle. I cannot remember the, the last team for the life of me right now, unfortunately. It makes me look bad, but I can't remember who it is, admittedly. I've really paid attention to our side who we're playing. So <laughs> I haven't looked at the other side of the pond too much, actually. Scotland. Scotland. What about... um? Like, there's big conjecture at the moment in the full-time game about, like, eligibility. Yeah. 
Would you be able to play? Is there another country I you don't could play for? Think so. I think with our game, it sort of is just primarily where you're playing with the side you're sort of in. We haven't had too many guys going to other countries, as far as I'm aware of, just because of like the distance and stuff yeah. with it. So, I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't think I particularly have any eligibility to play anywhere else, even if I wanted to. But wouldn't want to. I'm pretty happy here. Yeah. Well, you've made the issue. Yeah, exactly. So, but if you didn't, like I know, like my cousins, they played. Um, they played for Italy. Yep. So they, their team, the Frankie. Yep. Minicello, Minicello, Tedesco. Right, right. Plus, or they were all like sort of fringe, first grade reserve today. Yep. Their side was pretty good. <laughs> that Italian side, like, not one of them. They're all Australian. Yep. But um, they, I just remember that team. I was like, look at this roster. That's it's awesome. Just because they were eligible. Yeah. Right. Wow. So they obviously were never going to say the, the <laughs> Italian coaches just went, all right, who we got? Yeah. And I think Minicello might have been captain coach. Right, okay, awesome. But teammates with Teddy. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what the game plan was? Yeah. <laughs> Give it to Teddy. That's it, the show now. <laughs> no, that, were, that, that was so just the eligibility, but I also, um, I think I can only play, I don't think I, my other side of it is um, Scottish, but I right. don't think, I don't think that fits yep. within the eligibility because they might have been born here, but even yeah, okay. It's like grand, you know, might yeah, grand, I, grand, not I don't know how it works, but no, I just no, thought no. I'd ask you because yeah, no, you know, if there ever comes a time, you know, if there's more squads, yep. folks might go, oh well, I'm yeah, <laughs> else, no, I don't know, if they have. yeah, I don't know. I, there's a hope they want to get more teams. Yeah. I know we're definitely trying to start uh, a program sort of in New, New Zealand. They really want to get more countries near us so we can have yeah. more of that competition and more international fixtures yeah. rather than playing the same New South Wales and Queensland competitions like we've got Canberra going now yeah. which is really good as well um, just more people in chairs playing is what we need but you know how they got wheelchair rugby yes which we spoke earlier about like the rules yeah. are kind of similar in rugby league and basketball completely yeah. different I don't yes. I don't particularly like that they've attached rugby it's it's a very it. different it's, I think it's more like I think I've seen people say it's more like like European handball it's like a very different sport you could almost say Aussie rules yeah it's, it's strange forwards backs uh, you got your uh, middle yeah you, you just it's, forward and back passing like it's more it's it's slower as well but I think the reason behind that as well is that it's only uh, quads can play the game so people who have at least three limbs affected can play the game so you'll have people okay. with more severe disabilities okay. impairments to their hands and yeah. arms as well okay. so that's why it's very different to our yeah. game as well and just obviously the game is different yeah um, but I was just thinking because you said New Zealand obviously yeah. they're, they're uh, rugby union yeah um, royalty over there yeah. that's, their, that's their national sport that's it they're hopefully more so do they play the rugby style I don't know. I think so. I'm not okay. too familiar with the whole rugby world yeah. of it because obviously I never played it. I couldn't play it. So I haven't paid too much attention to it. But yeah, yeah as you say, like with Union being so big over there, there's obviously players yeah. and an interest there. So get him into league, which is the closest thing we have if the same well, the, athletes. I, that's, just so no I, that's just what I was about to say mm. is that like, um, like Kiwis can play rugby, like the skill set's the same. Yep. Um, but rugby league's probably more suited to the wheelchair yes. than yeah. say rugby union because... Yep. Well, one scrum. You can't translate outs. some of those things. Like, exactly. like rucking, mauling, all that yeah. stuff, pick and draw. Like that's it's not going to happen. No. So really, rugby league probably should just be called rugby. Yeah, because it, 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 it is covers the league and union yeah. more accurately to what a rugby. Well, game I'm just trying to think. Like, how would you promote it in New Zealand? Yeah, you just it is just league. So you just put it in NRL. Yeah. You probably just run with it as the Warriors and New Zealand there and take advantage of those sort of things. But I suppose you've got a fan base anyway. But I suppose if you want it to go, because it could be huge yeah, over there. Absolutely. You know, um, it would be because they, they love, that's if they love their rugby. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, so I think that, yeah, if you can get New Zealand. Yeah, that's the hope. And that's the thing. You talked about France, Spain, Wales, yeah. all being good, Australia, France, but New Zealand. Yep. Give them time. Need... Give them time. Oh, 100%. We'll, we'll, we'll like, hopefully that's... get there because... The more local competition is good as well, yeah. so we can iron sharpens iron. I mean, France gets to play England and that so much, yeah. so if we had someone else appear, it would be great. I mean, that's what happened with State of Origin a lot, yeah. because for a long time it was mm -hmm. New South Wales gave the drubbing to Queensland, mm -hmm. and the last two times Queensland have given a number to us and returned the favour, and mm -hmm. they have improved that much just in a few years because mm -hmm. of this, this relationship, and it's done the same for us. Now we have something to work on and really improve, yeah. and it's great for us going into the World Cup because yeah. now there's so much more 
really we looked at and go we need to get better yeah. for the new south wales guys at least we need to work on well it translates into the proper nrl yeah if you think about it technically yep. australia gets three extra test, test matches yeah. a year. exactly yeah at the high Queensland level versus new south wales full intensity and since that started really england and new zealand yeah on rare occasions sure. we spoke about it with the new zealand team mm. at the moment um, probably the best one they've had just yeah. because of Manu and, and Jerome Hughes yeah. and the halves or fullback. They're going to yeah. probably, I'd imagine they put Tamari Martin at fullback. True. Um, or he could play six and leave Manu. Yeah, they can so shift. They, they can make changes. They got yeah. such, and then they've probably got four and as backup. Yep. So they, they've they got a good. It's good. Um, Tavita Harris, they've got so. Uh, <laughs> Tahu, um, what's the guy's name? Tahu Harris? <laughs> yeah, Tahu. Tahu Harris. Yeah. Like, but what I was saying is that, like, yeah, we. Since New South Wales has played Queensland yep. and Origin, England hasn't got it. Yeah, game. it's true. So it, it's just the actual training. The more you play, you say you should go to three matches. That's yeah. If you want to win a the lot World of the players Cup in the future, that. and this one coming, that's it. I think you got to go to three. Yep. So same as, same with the, down the line. Same with the women. Yeah, you got to go to three. They definitely should. That's it's a massive advantage for yeah. Australia. Um. But New Zealand, they could probably do their own. Yeah. So, you know, there's no real excuse. Any high-level rep games, you get the players yeah. out there. It's just always good experience. Well, the more you get, play get it going. A test matches against New Zealand, New Zealand's just going to go. Exactly. Catch that's, you. That's they're what gonna, we want. We need this. They're going to catch you. They're going to catch England and France, and the rest is history. But you that's also it. spoke about the next generation of players. Yeah. Come on. Like, when, they, when that joins, so you guys sort of, you've probably, and then those younger guys, when you guys actually take over and yep. doing that you guys are going to be hard to beat yeah that's that's the awesome thing like looking yeah. at like we have a really good mix right now on this wheelers side <laughs> of yeah. sort of guys who've been there and done a few yeah. world cups and then we have quite a few of us who are that under 25 sort of thing who are coming up and it's like yeah. you look at this there's at least like four or five of us who'll be there hopefully for the next few world cups and then in our yeah. development sort of comps there's some talent coming up and you give them time they'll be biting at our yeah. heels and kicking us out soon like well, it's excellent i think that um yeah, I mean, definitely the next, because I think every World, World Cup's going to be every four years now. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely you're going to be there for at least the next eight That's years. That's I, I want to yeah. at least make make a few more. Yeah. But I'm not not going to take anything for granted. Yeah. I'm happy to have made the one. It's an absolute honour. And then yeah. working towards it and getting the best side Australia can have out, whether that is or isn't me at the next one. So that's all that matters for Australia. No, you said exactly what I was just about yeah. to say. I asked you. <laughs> Was that, yeah, like, that's what you want. You want the production line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Best, the best players. I'm, I'm not going to be here yeah. forever. And yeah. I'm young enough that I hope I will be for a few more, but there's there's some solid talent yeah. coming in who are going to be able to replicate what we're doing now quicker yeah. and younger than we were. Yeah, well, they're learning all the lessons. Like, that's I it. remember even, like, the technical side of actually the wheelchairs. Yep. How, like, the difference between what they looked like three or four years ago yeah. to Where what some they of these guys like are now. now. 100%. The material, the weight, the wheels, yep. the way you just, you, everything that, you know, they're, you know, they're... It's, it's constant progress. So like, you need to always find what's better. I'm a bit of a Formula One yep. tragic. Yep. So, um, it kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, right. It's like, you, you could might be able to find a few little advantages <laughs> over your competition just by <laughs> the actual chair. Yeah, right. Coming up with some things that might actually... Get, I, I just look at it that. I'm yeah. like, oh, from a technical side, like, you could do... I don't know. That's very cool, yeah. I mean, because all Formula One teams cheat. Yeah. <laughs> they, they say they don't, but they do. Not following regulations. No, no, really. no, yeah, no. fair. 100% they don't. That's it. Well, it's funny. Um, yeah, well, Ferrari was winning everything. Mm. And I obviously, Italian Heritage, I said, yep. they're definitely cheating. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way that they're that much quicker than Red Bull. No, that's it. And uh, Mercedes. <laughs> and they've proven it um, so far because um, I think last time they did that they actually got busted for cheating right okay like they had something illegal so ouch bloody Italians <laughs> tell you what um, but yeah um, so in terms of um, you know um, was there anything else that you wanted to say to people that um, I may not have touched on or we, we'd sort of covered it but with, with disabled sports like wheelchair sports like this is a great benefit of them especially in australia is that they are so inclusive that everyone can play it and it's just i think that's something that i recommend to everyone i've had all of my my mates come down my able-bodied mates come and give it a go and sort of thing and 
they're just an amazing experience. But I've had we've had players who are temporarily injured or they've done their knee or they've done their ACL and playing league or something and now they can't play for a year, but pop them in a chair and they can still have that experience and realize they fall in love with it because it's no different at the end of the day. Yeah, well, that's what we touched on throughout, like the peripheralness and, mm. the, and the sense sensibility yeah. of like feeling it. It's it's similar. So you're saying when someone's injured? Yeah, we've we've had a few people who've, who've done that who've come and played. They've had leg injuries on the injuries from basketball or league, and then we tell them, well, while you can't play your running game, come to Visigo. Well, yeah, you probably um, you know what that that's brilliant. What yeah. you just said because yeah, it. I think I think I know it sounds silly to some people but yeah i reckon skills would transfer yes yeah. no from, it's, you're gonna still get something of yeah. value for your running game out of doing this yeah you, there's always something to take from it you're, you're passing your skills and you're reading the game is always the same on a smaller level that's interesting because nrl players yeah they're always getting injured and out for like periods of time yep suspended players yeah should be forced to go and play in a wheelchair it'd, it'd be good we had that should be like community service that'd be imagine yeah. that like <laughs> pat carrigan just we got, had <laughs> we had close to that we had uh adam fanua blake i believe a few years ago had an incident where he'd said uh called something. someone a, yeah he said field. something inappropriate and yeah. he was directed that he was meant to come and do programs with us yep um, for a while immediately after that he got traded he got sat with the trainer but he ended up going to the Warriors and he didn't do so it he never he didn't do we it we never I saw know. a foot of it don't worry was, I thought about that New at the time. I was going there every weekend going oh I wonder when he's coming yeah out. but he, oh, he, he ended up going up again. New Zealand so we never saw it but it's at least it was nice that the NRL sort of took consideration of that yeah. and awareness that we're there and it was they, a good idea at the end of the day well, they could have they could have sent one of the Trebojevic brothers it's about eight well, of them they, they've been <laughs> So, they've been involved we've so, had some of them we had mutual boy which brother we had a uh, tom came down to one of oh, our yeah, events cool. where tom's cool we we had one of our events for media and he came down which is nice and we have james tarmow who's one of our ambassadors of the game and he was at our state of origin yeah. game uh it was the day before he played yeah. his 300th unfortunately the controversial loss now yeah um, yeah but he was at our game there and gave us our jerseys oh. and that was awesome to see him there well i know he obviously played for penrith but yeah. he's a local sort of guy anyone that like you hear talk about James. Yeah. They all say the same thing. Yeah. He's big, scary, but he's <laughs> the nicest guy. He's, he's he an behind. absolute gentleman. He, he spent yeah. a lot of time with us. Yeah. He's come down to a few of our yeah. events and he's he's yeah. always the first to yeah. chat with everyone, spends a lot of yeah. time in the chair and really just interested. Yeah. And we had, fittingly, another Tiger connection. We had Brett Kamali was another of our ambassadors okay. and he's been involved and come down a few times. And yeah, not That even. was one where, that was a fanboy for me when I started playing. Oh, yeah. Having his footy Tarzos and all those things growing but up he, is my favourite and he came he, down and yeah, been involved. Noddy, um, you know, he's obviously had tragedy in his yeah. life too but he gets forgotten yep like how brilliant he was absolutely like he was top top two halfbacks for a decade yep absolutely or my favorite probably my longer favorite 12 time. 13 14 years yeah had a few like i think you know when origin when he threw that intercept yeah. like it's matt bowen <laughs> yeah like he's yeah. the only bloke that would have caught that pass yeah that's what they're forgetting yeah. like they're saying i oh, but a front row wouldn't have that's Matt Bowen just going like reading, yeah. reading the game from when he was five years old exactly, going, oh, I can yeah. smell that bang well, that's it but yeah. it's it's good we're yeah. getting more people who are involved and ambassadors interested in the game and I think mm. that's what we can hope after this World Cup now being put at an equal stage with the men's and the women's yeah. games and especially with the broadcasting and hopefully yeah. how the media uh, yeah. is aware of it and hopefully talks about us more it'll just be awesome for more yeah. people to be aware of our game and players and anyone interested to really just embrace it. Well, as I said, I'll probably leave it on this. I think that you should be kangaroos. <laughs> I think that you should be treated exactly the same. Yeah. You've put in the same amount of work as the men and the women. And it should be, you should get everything. The blazer, the lot. Like you guys should <laughs> we, will have, we will have yeah. jackets and all those sort you of need, things at least. Like, so we get the full kit. I just don't nice. like how sporting like they're australian yeah. rugby league you're playing for the kangaroos that's just one thing yeah, you fair know enough. Did you play for the maroons or the, <laughs> the blues it's the blues yeah yeah that's i that's just um no i get that i think that that should be definitely <laughs> no i think you deserve it yeah you should be um you know tedesco and yourself should both be known as kangaroo test players yeah. <laughs> world cup play, like it just should be the same but no, um no. yeah all right well, i think we'll wrap it up there this yeah, is a pretty good, good uh pretty good chat no i appreciate it i've enjoyed it thoroughly it's been awesome um i think um we touched on 
fair few topics and yep. didn't get too deep, but we, we did, you know. Um, it was good. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it thoroughly. No, so of course, thank you for your time. And, no, it's been um, great. Best of luck at the end of the year. Thank and, you. Um, we'll, I'm sure we'll do some things leading up to yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. For, we'll try uh, to go. For Zionics and that. Definitely. So just before you go, yep. um, I've got a discount code for Liam because he's an ambassador of ours. Um, it's nice. just Liam Luff 10. Sweet. So anyone that wants to jump on, buy a hat. Oh, you're going to get a couple of hats too. By Beautiful. Because um, you're my ambassador. <laughs> you get some freebies. Um, but so, um, yeah. So I guess, um, what was I saying? I think you were wrapping up. Was I wrapping <laughs> yeah. up? Um, yeah. So I guess, um, yeah, I think we'll just do, leave it there. Do it easy. And um, all the best, mate. Awesome. Thank you. It's been awesome being here.